Here is Charlie Gonzalez at Cerda in the corner. It's Charlie on the wing. Charlie holding. Charlie shooting. Just wide. Leo's got the ball down. One minute, three seconds. Left on the power play. Charlie to Childs. Childs, low shot. Missed it, but then found the rebound. Chasing it down and tracking it to Leo. There's 53 seconds on the man advantage. Cerda had an angle. Cerda centers. Well read by Berto. Fine. Here comes the counter. Nestor with Uzi. Nestor Hernandez pulls down Cerda. Oh, man. That was a dangerous play. No f just a common foul, but that was nasty. 36 seconds. Here are your 36 seconds, now less, from killing off four minutes of, of penalty here. It's like when you see a high-sticking double minor in hockey. I'd like to welcome back our audience that's now found us on MASL Soccer 2. Three, okay, three. Hey, well, you know, we're... <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to be on the Ocho? <laughs> Let me know. 13 seconds left in this power play. Serda and Charlie Gonzalez and Leo and Childs. Two Morgan and past him. One last chance, perhaps. Soccer's are now one for three on the man advantage. Leo shoots. He oh! scores! <laughs> As the penalty expires, Leonardo de Oliveira catches the inside of the right post and home. His 12th of the year makes it 2-1 San Diego. Golasso. The thing of beauty from Leo. Dip the shoulder in on the right foot. That's, that's aesthetically pleasing. This angle's fun here, too. See this thing at the inside of the post to go all the way to the other side netting. Tucked. Precision. Perfection. Golazo, Leonardo, de Oliveira. And a 2-1 lead for the San Diego soccer. Seeing as we just had an uh, interruption, let's, let's stay here and welcome everyone back and kind of reset things. Craig Elston, Nate Abadeh, our TVX video crew. Apparently, uh, we got dinked on some copyright thing uh, over on MASL Soccer. No saying, no lo saying. However... We're back on MASL Soccer 3. Here we are. And the Soccers have a 2-1 lead. If this result holds, the old live table, if this result holds, Milwaukee, we already know, they're locked in as 8. But St. Louis would be the 7th seed, and Ontario would be out of the playoffs altogether. Ontario must win in regulation in order to advance to the playoffs in which case St. Louis would go from 7th to out. So weird. 8, eight, is, eight is settled, but, but 7 and 9 still have to be sorted out. And I thought 7, 8, 9. That was, that was for the, the newest audience coming in on Twitch. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to everybody for chasing us around the website. We'll endeavor to, I guess, stay here a while, at least till halftime. Until we're on MASL 7 or the Ocho. Well, I'm waiting for the Ocho. I mean, I'm holding out it, at it will, this point. We'll I wanna, be at MASL 789. I want to dis <laughs> you know, displace professional cornhole and uh, take our rightful spot. Tavoy Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> Ridden to the floor and they call the foul on Tavoy. <laughs> they said that he brought down Robert Palmer with him. Impressive. Now announcing the goal. I think they're calling it power play. I honestly think Cissé could have jumped out of the box and not made that a power play goal. And I think he stopped and kind of watched it score. Charlie gets the assist. Oh, they said Childs the assist. I thought it was Charlie. We'll double check that. Nine twenty-five. the time of that go-ahead goal. And what do we say about the Fury taking leads in matches? Here is Tayu. Ball will bounce its way slowly to Parno. Imagine having the nerves of steel to just hang there and wait for that ball to slowly hop to you with Frank Tayu, you know, gunning down at six foot three. 
Pardo's got nerves of steel. Foul on Childs. I like how they say with stuff like that, you know, classic cliche, not for the faint of heart. I, I like to just be very personal about it. Not for me. Yes. I'm not I'm not doing that. Right. I'm no I, chance. Absolutely not. No. So so cheers to you, Boris Pardo, is the is the point of all that. We talked about some of the statistical things that could happen tonight. One has happened, Craig Childs getting his 40th point, getting back in the lineup. According to the official scores downstairs, he just got his 41st. I thought it was Charlie, but we'll double check. Tayu. It's a good step in there by Serta to take the ball off his foot for a second. It's back to the back line and Palmer. Here comes Pacheco. And Cisse. Stinson now turns to face. Rojo's on him. Give and go. Quick passing to Pacheco, the left footer. Sneaking his way in. Little hesitation move and back to Palmer. Now trying to feed Tayu. Tayu top of the crease. Tayu skips it on back to his brother, Uzi. Boris Pardo, depending on performance tonight, could win the MASL goalkeeping triple crown. He has wins cinched. He leads Chris Toth in goals against average. And based on performance, I'd have to look at the exact math, but he should have passed Nicolau Neto of Kansas City for save percentage coming into tonight because Neto gave up a few last night, gave up six today. And you know, you, you brought up the name Chris Toth. Morgan. Who, <laughs> foul. Morgan's foul. This, the guy who Boris used to share goalkeeping responsibilities with not so long ago with the soccer's team. A big part of that trade of Chris Toth for Leonardo de Oliveira back in 2018 was to get Boris as the clear first string starter. Why is Chris Toth not playing tonight? I'm baffled, to be I'm, honest. Uh, I've got one thought. Here's Serta as he tips it over to Dallin Cutler getting a rare shift. Cutler played all five quarters of Seth soccer's two playoff match against RGV earlier this afternoon. Had the biggest play of the match, you could argue, blocking the golden goal off the line just 15 seconds into extra time. It was won by SD Soccer's 2 6 to 5 on an Uziel Gonzalez top of the arc direct kick. Advancing SD Soccer's 2 the final four. To the final four, exactly. Not right. that final four, a different final four. The M2 final four to be held in beautiful Muskegon. A weekend in Muskegon is your. Grand prize, you picked door number three, SD Soccer. What, what game show is that? <laughs> Let's make a deal with Monty Hall at the day <laughs> off. Uh, Rojo, so did Wayne Brady, apparently, and was replaced by, like, Mr. Magoo. Gutierrez got a nice swift kick to the mic from Tiago Gonzalez, who now has the ball. Where is Muskegon? Um, Illinois. Illinois? Michigan. 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 Of course it's Michigan. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> let me let me really get the Twitch <laughs> yeah, chat <exactly>. going now. <laughs> Sitting on my perch in San Diego, uh, California. What's, the, what's exclamation Illinois, point flyover country? Michigan, <laughs> Wisconsin, <laughs> Iowa. What's the difference? Uh, lots. Yeah. Apparently, someone in the production crew is from Indiana. Like so, I said, what's the difference? I mean, where is he now? <laughs> Not Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might as well have been, right? <laughs> Oh, boy. Great play by Nestor. Got it past Rojo. Can Nestor bring it in? Ooh, just wide with that rocket shot. Trying to level the score. 90 seconds left before halftime. Oh, bossy saved by Pardo. That's a big save. That shot was trailing. I should say really kind of tailing down yes. in a way. Had like a two-seam fastball kind of movement on it. Boris got down and did enough. Looked like a Logan Webb two-seamer. Oh, don't get me going. Don't get me going. Come on now. Pardo hanging with it. A little, little Logie Webb shout out. Here's Rojo. Rojo had a wide open Gutierrez and oh. could not complete the TJ counter. It was broken up by Sang. Minute 30 is live. We'll have a MASL primetime segment coming up at halftime, plus the highlights of this one, including the parts that you missed <laughs> while we were away. Maybe we should just replay uh, like the first five minutes of the second quarter. I keyed, I keyed. Here comes Delion, but do I kid? Here is Good Gonzalez trying to dig it out. There's 35 seconds, and Pardo reads the angle. Does he have a counter? He does not. We'll roll it short to Rojo. Rojo's got two men around him. This is a dangerous run. He makes it happen. Digs it out for Childs. Tipped away by Obasi. And then DeLima is out on vacation. 
He flips and falls. That was a weak attempt to sell a foul. Tyu went flying. And Cardenas Blue. will be whistled for that one. Blue card out, Craig. Really? Wow. Saying it denied a scoring opportunity. Let's get a look here. This was a shoulder by DeLima to Childs. Well, now that foul from Cardenas, absolutely. Ooh, Frank, Frank sold a little himself there, but yeah. the card's out. That's all that matters. So, so Cardenas gets his fifth blue card of the season. And this power play has 16 seconds on it. Or it could be a way to start the third quarter for Ontario. Attempting to tie this match. Again, a match they must have. Oh, and I love this, Craig. This is great. This is a great six little attackers. nuance of Arena Soccer play. right now. They're going sixth attacker. As they've only got 16.3 left. Why not? I love this. Super power play. This is fantastic. One of my favorite terminologies <laughs> in all of sports. This is the 6v4, the super power play. Created by Ron Newman well, we, we in had 1982. We had a 3v3 the other night, so why not a 6v4 tonight? Tayuda stints in 10 seconds. Stints into Tapete, who fires it wide, always wide. Five seconds. It's De Leon. Ooh, one more chance. One chance, perhaps. Stinson, can he crank it? Deflected by Serda to deny the opportunity. Wow. <laughs> and I wonder if they'll stay in super power play to start the third. Probably not. <laughs> But that was an important 16 seconds that was fun. of defense. That was a fun 30 minutes. Low Halfway done. Low scoring, but highly entertaining. With 30 minutes complete, 30 yet to play from Pachanga Arena San Diego. Our score, 2-1 Soccers. Our scoring summary, and we recognize the interruption in streaming that we had earlier, and we apologize for said interruption. Copyright, whatever. Justin Stinson scoring a minute three into the match on a wall of scorer from Anua Obasi to make it one to nothing. Soccers were basically out of sorts in terms of their attack the entire half, but they got two power play goals. Charlie Gonzalez from Craig Childs at 10.39 of the first. And Leo, I have it from Charlie. We'll double check the replay at halftime. They had it downstairs from Childs at 9.25. 2-1 is the score. Phil Salvaggio, head coach of the Soccers, is standing by on the floor with Melissa May. Coach, what went into your decision tonight to not really rest any players since we are, the Soccers have already secured that number one spot? Uh, I play every game to win, and every game means something to us as an organization, so we play our hardest all the time. You can never let down in this league because it carries. Absolutely. In terms of any changes, can you talk about any changes you're going to make after the half? Uh, no, we're going to probably play the same way coming out here. Uh, maybe a little bit more defense um, and take care of our lead. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Back to you. Thank you very much, Melissa. Appreciate it. It's halftime from Pachanga Arena. 2-1, to one, the Soccers lead Ontario, a result that if it holds, would put St. Louis into the playoffs and send the Fury home. One of the Ron Newman Cup contending favorites going into the season would miss the bracket altogether. But the Fury have 30 huge minutes to try and change that. We'll bring you a segment from Alex Bastjavansky, MASL primetime coming up, plus highlights in the third quarter next. You're watching the Major Arena Soccer League on Twitch.
It's halftime at Pachanga Arena San Diego, and the clubs are back out on the floor to get ready for the start of the third quarter. Two to one, soccer's leading the Ontario Fury. Craig Elston, TVX video crew here with you. Let's go through the first half highlights. I know we got uh, bumped off one network to another here on Twitch, so in case you missed anything, this happened right away. Anua Obasi, both Rojo and Garden is not marking Stinson. Ball went right through him to make it one nothing. Boris Pardo, huge save early and taken off the line by Luis Pee Wee Ortega, or else it would have been two nothing two minutes in. Soccer's got a power play for too many men, and while Tavoy Morgan couldn't get the touch there, Charlie Gonzalez had it. Firing in, Gonzalez has been red hot to make it a 1-1 tie. And then it was Charlie Taleo, I was right about that. Charlie Gonzalez getting the assist. Leonardo de Oliveira gets the power play goal to make it 2-1. Onua Obasi saved by Pardo, that wicked slider of a shot. Pardo was strong, soccer's defense strong. Soccer's offense was virtually non-existent. San Diego playing without Brandon Escoto tonight most of their big stars in the lineup Craig Child's back although playing sparingly however the Fury resetting the stakes the Fury need to win in regulation and if they do they not only make the playoffs but they're the seventh seed they dodge the Sockers and play the Tropics in the first round if the Sockers prevail and hold or build this lead, then Ontario is eliminated. St. Louis is seven, Milwaukee is eight. Either way, it's the Sockers and the Wave. And I do understand, and I see it in our, our Twitch chat, that the MESL website currently shows Milwaukee seven and St. Louis eight. Now, if the league is wrong about this, they have been personally wrong to me because we literally triple checked this information before coming on the air saying so if this then that right yes okay if the other thing then the other thing yes right so that means it's this yes yes so if that was wrong i i i don't think it is i mean that you know that, that's what they told me so let's find out what happens and if it changes masl gone to masl that's all i'm gonna say I'm Craig Elston with Melissa May, our TVX video crew, and with third quarter play by play. Mi querido amigo Nate Avare. Muchísimas gracias, Señor Elston. Ontario beginning this third quarter on a power play. The Soccers beginning this third quarter with an odd man rush the other way. And this one saved from point blank rage from the feet of Rojo in the third quarter. Almost taking a little page out of the first quarter book. Saw Ontario put a barrage on the net of Boris Pardo and get a goal after just a minute and three seconds. A little over a minute left on this power play for Ontario. Ontario Fury trailing 2-1 to the Soccers of San Diego. Stinson blasts this one high up into the netting. Again, if you're just joining us, as we see the save, a wow. big, big stop, a crucial save there from De Lima. Ontario must win in regulation to make the postseason. The Sockers are not only already in the postseason, they're already clinched as the number one. And they will host a second leg playoff affair next Sunday right here. And then hopefully host a few more. But we'll get to that later and try to not jinx anything as the first minute has gone by here in the third quarter. Ontario and San Diego, it's classic MASL rivals. Rematch of last year's Ron Newman Cup final. SoCal Derby. Of course, it's been all San Diego for the most part. Blue card out. Wow. Oh. Gutierrez got in the air first. Now remember, Christian just coming back from that bad ankle situation. And let's see one more time what happened look here. here Craig. Oh, he got drilled in the head by Tayu. No, this is was... contact to the head. Yeah. Sandwiched indeed, too, between two opponents. And I hope Christian's okay here. I hope he didn't land on the ankle. Be rough. I mean, he... That's just, that's that's bad news. And he's waving off. I mean, this is obviously tough yeah. as nails. He'd, he be, he'd, he'd limp off if he had a broken leg if you let him. 
Christian Gutierrez seems to be okay, and it was a great little kind of classic waving of the hands up at the referee who was willing, who was about to call for the training staff. That was Christian Gutierrez saying, no, 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 no. I'm fine. All good. And now the Sockers are on a power play of their own. So they managed to kill off the Ontario man advantage. Well, 29 seconds of 4v4. And then it'll be a power play for a minute 31 for San Diego. I'm getting ahead of myself. Thank you. I'm already talking about third round playoff games. and <laughs> let's, let's fit one thing at a time here, people. Let's stay in the moment. All right. I, I try. I try to do that. As a writer, as a broadcaster, as a human. Here's Boris Pardo. Fast forward to Tavoy Morgan. Pride to Spanish Town, Jamaica. Chases it down. Tavoy Morgan. Not the only Jamaican international involved in the game tonight. And Robert Palmer. Out there for Ontario. Here comes Charlie Gonzalez. Soccers are now on a power play. Not to be confused with that imaginary power play that I made up 30 seconds ago. Here this is, is a real one. Yeah, with Leo on the floor. <laughs> and Childs and, coming soon. And surely Craig Childs on the floor. Well, now it's a power play. They just spent 15 seconds of it changing. Well, they had to, get, had to get the right people out there. Craig said, why am I not on the floor? Something to that effect. <laughs> Felt like there was a little discussion with him standing, on the, <laughs> standing in the door. I'm like, get out there. Kid. Here's Childs on the red line. Into Leo. Back to Craig Childs. Childs back to Charlie on the other side of the red line. Up against the boards at Serda. On the right attacking side, up against that Soccer Loco logo. Dead center just behind the red line, Charlie. Leonardo de Oliveira. So roll back to Charlie Gonzalez. Charlie back with it again. Childs. Patience, a virtue. Soccer's showing it. Charlie to Leo. At what point does patience become complacency? Childs. Tries to send one into a danger area. It found itself all the way over with Cesar Cerda. Cerda up against the wall. Cerda back to Leo. 20 seconds left on the power play. Still Leo. Charlie! Big save to Lima. Playing well. Down to his left. You know, we asked. We were puzzled why Chris Toth wasn't playing tonight. I have some answers. And, and another thing is now, what's the call here? They're saying to Lima held on to it too long. Oh, oh you don't see this every wow. day. This is a... The four-second violation. That was indeed the four-second. One of the most lenient of rules. One of the rules that you see so much gray area and leniency shown to goalkeepers. And right as we're singing his praises, DeLima, as this call go against him, the Sockers could maybe still get something on this power play. Instead, they're going to get a timeout. All right, so uh, a, a little birdie uh, filled in uh, some of the background on what's going on in net and part of it we definitely knew coming in which is that Chris Toth took a really really nasty hit to his ankle down in Chihuahua and you could especially if you are in the Ontario side of things argue whether there was some deep cynicism to that tackle uh, and, and to the foul that occurred down there because uh, it 100% it changed that weekend for Ontario changed perhaps their whole playoff trajectory Chris has since played, and he played Wednesday against Florida. So he, he could play. But what I have been told is that Clayson DeLima wanted this game. That he specifically wanted this game. That he's got, you know, a beef. He, he's got some personal feelings when it comes to the soccer. Of course, DeLima was knocked out of the, the what was then called mini game. We'll now call the knockout game or extra time uh, with a minute to play, essentially like a minute and a half to play and, and had to leave that game. And soccer scored on Chewy Molina you know, like a half minute later. Here's the top of the arc, my friend. So this was an unfortunate giveaway from DeLima. Bit of a ticky-tack call, but it's the law. And here comes Childs on the free kick. Oh, what a save from DeLima. And he makes up for... Any mistake that he may have just made there with another fantastic stop. He's been superb tonight. Tie you out of the box, even strength. Ontario, they don't get anything from their power play, but they also prevent the Sockers from scoring on theirs. And for is this the first time all second half thus far that we've had even strength against even strength? I believe so. Unless you count the 25 seconds of 4v4. But this is full strength versus full strength. Let me really 
really hammer that home. Here's Goncalves. Forward to Stinson. Stinson's had an electric game. Scored a nice goal to get his team off to a 1-0 start. Big assist on that play from Obasi. Look out for Topete. Up that left side, in on the right foot, plays it. Boris was creeping off his line, and the ball was almost tucked into the near post. But Boris does enough to dive back and get in front of it and haul it in. Tries for the fly pattern touchdown to Cristian Gutierrez. Sorted out defensively by Ontario. Well, back with the Lima. He's got to be careful here. Is Zé Roberto on his night, on his tribute night here at the Grand Old Arena. It's beautiful Zé Roberto t-shirt jerseys given out just all fans in attendance His final regular season game as a San Diego soccer the 43 year old Zay Roberto his entire family came out with him for opening introductions a great moment earlier this evening and Zay Roberto saying hey this ain't all about just tribute and homage I got something to contribute to this game moments ago there he was pressing in on DeLima Trying to force an error, and he almost did so. Here's Tavoy Morgan with his back to goal. <laughs> fell to the ground. No whistle coming. As we approach 10 minutes remaining here in this third quarter. Zay to Tavoy. Tavoy Morgan loves that swivel and shoot move. Here's Zay Roberto. Oh, crowd just lit up and held its breath. It didn't have enough pace on it, but the crowd loving the acrobatic effort. Cries of a foul against Cisse, not heard. Cisse says, let's play. Cisse goes all the way, shoots with the toe. A la Ronaldinho and Boris Porto goes up with the right hand and makes a fantastic save. Spectacular. Spectacular all around. That was good stuff from everybody involved. Going all the way back to the acrobatic attempt at the other end from Zay Roberto. Some good saves there from De Lima. And then an even better one at the other end. And the man in the pink kit with number 27 on the back Frank Tayu tries that Tavoy Morgan spin and shoot move I'm sure Frank would like to claim it as zone he's been doing it maybe a wee bit longer but it is a very very similar move it's one you see Craig Childs do quite a bit yes fans of NBA basketball or college basketball or any form of basketball the concept of post play classic post play it's the arena soccer equivalent back to goal spin and shoot only the best can do it and only the strongest can do it. It takes a certain amount of lower body and upper body strength to hold off the defender and have the wherewithal to spin and shoot pretty much all at the same time. This guy's been electric tonight. Obasi, bit of a showman himself. He's slowing things down to his pace. And now shoots with the right foot and scores! A colossal goal! Obasi's had one hell of a game this evening, and it's 2-all with 8.47 left in the third quarter, Craig. Anua Obasi, player with big game experience, big league experience. Wow, did that get a, a little bit of a touch off Cardenas? I don't think so. Let's watch it again from low angle. This is a great angle right here to see if it did. I think it yeah, just, it, it might have been it going did. in anyway, though. I I'm not sure so. if it really affected anything for Boris there. I think that was going in far post regardless, and what a goal, what a game. That great Wallace score assist back in the first quarter. Back around the opening minute of this game. And now here just a few seconds ago, Mbassi says, now oh, I got an assist and a goal of my own. Two it's all. First of the year. It's for, that blows my mind. <laughs> hasn't been here that long. Wasn't playing in Utica. But nonetheless. But wasting no time. Yeah, great shot. Wasting no time. I, I remembered him back in the day with Baltimore and, and how talented he is and still remains, obviously. Tavoy Morgan. Good ad for this club. Another talented individual out there. Tavoy Morgan with the number nine on his back looking to really put a footprint into this game. The way that he most certainly did on Thursday against Florida. No handful of goals tonight for Tavoy. It's been a lot tougher of an assignment. Funny enough, against a team that's lost seven straight, as opposed to that second best team in the league that the Sockers played on Thursday and to void in that first quarter at least made him look like a pub team. Really did. <laughs> I mean, it's not an overstatement. Ooh, oh out. my God, Leo, what are you doing? <laughs> Leonardo de Oliveira dancing on the side of the highway. What is risk? What's risk anyway? What does it all mean? Approaching seven and a half left here in the third quarter. Long ball forward for Cerda. Off the glass. 
pinned up against the wall in that right attacking corner. Manages to play it up the wall to Rojo. Rojo cross field near this left side to Leonardo de Oliveira. Leo, after dribbling across the face of his own goal, is now in a more familiar setting. He's trying to attack the other goal. Here's De Lima, in a bit of a precarious spot himself. It does enough to blast it off the glass and out. Leonardo over to Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez into the game. Juan Gonzalez tries to find his old pal Craig Childs. A little bit too much mustard on it. It's going to roll up and over the boards and out of play. Here's <laughs> Leo again. Hey, <laughs> who cares if there's motorcycles and buses whizzing by me? Just gonna have a I got a dance to do yeah. here. Look at a little parkour right here. What don't you understand? That really was. That was arena soccer parkour. Yeah, make sure. I like that. Kill the crowd, Mike. I want to like stay that. on the air. <laughs> Here's if, a loss. If our suspicion is right. I just, I'm try, sorry, I'm trying to talk over the band just to make sure. That talk over the band. I'm talking extra loud over the band. Yeah. Do not play any copyrighted music. <laughs> Can you play only originals, please? Good Lord. <laughs> the Aztec fight song, maybe. Anything. Don't you got any originals? You only play covers? <laughs> Who hired this band? Six and a half left, third quarter. Oh, my God. It actually did. That's right. Here's Cissé. Here's Obasi. I mean, we're on the air. That's the good thing. All right. Obasi being shoved. Obasi having a conversation with the ref. Being shoved a little bit there by Garcia. The now the ball this. back with Cristian Gutierrez. Oh. Topete. Strong shoulder. The crowd doesn't like uh, it. And now Topete goes down. And it's a foul. And everybody's going to take a deep breath. We're going to calm down. We're still on the air. Yay. We're all going to exhale. Says they have sound. We're all going to exhale and We're enjoy ourselves. I'm sure the chat is very lively right now. The broadcast is lively right now. And they're giving it a nice shout out. Calvin Shout out Clark. to the band. I love the band. Yes. I, did, did I mention that I love I mean, the band? It's incredible. It's great. It's a great band. The, you know, there's these weird things when you're online. And... Fan of original material. You know, <laughs> here's a bad oh. giveaway. Dallin Cutler, back heel, goal! Rojo, 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 goal! Dallin Cutler could have had his name up in lights, and instead. He makes the smart play, the unselfish play, and I'll add this as well, the aesthetically pleasing play. Dallin Cutler, watch this after the gift. That little soul roll right there. Leonardo de Oliveira, eat your heart out. Dallin <laughs> Cutler takes a page out of the Leo playbook. That was gorgeous. And Rojo does just enough with the finish to get it up and over the dive at De Lima. Beautiful stuff for San Diego. Got me dancing on the highway. <laughs> Come on. Juan Manuel. That was gorgeous. Juan Manuel. That better be the first thing on the reel at Rancho Bernardo High boys soccer film session this week. That back heel pass. You kids think I can't play? Watch what coach can do. I'm telling you, he was the hero of soccer's two and overtime two defensively. He played in soccer yeah, too not, today. Not the only. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Off the post from Dolpete. What a shot that was! And Delian was down for a minute. He's back up. The double header for Dallin Cutler. Yeah, he's playing his second full game. That's incredible. I was going to mention. Thankfully, your dance moves not copyrighted. <laughs> no infringement. <laughs> Nor seen. Four also, thankfully. <laughs> thankfully. Four and a half minutes left, third quarter. Soccer's lead 3-2. How about this game? Low scoring, certainly not lacking for entertainment. And most of these goals have been true fangs of beauty. <laughs> and there you go. Wow. Otra. Colasso for Ontario. Thiago Goncalves with the side of his right foot beats a sprawling Boris Pardo. And we're back to a tie game. It's 3-3 with 4.17 left in the third quarter. Doctor, doctor, let me give you the news. Whew. I got a bad case of Fury Blues. That's, did, is there a deflection on this? Yep, it was deflected, deflected off Cutler. 
tiniest, tiniest little deflection, but take nothing away from Goncalves. As we're talking about all the fine goals in this game, that's going to be a hold against Ontario right there, so a foul, no blue card. <laughs> the classic pantomime from so many of the soccer's players putting up the... putting up. It should be a blue, it should be a blue. No blue, just a free kick, and a tie game again. 3-3, just as we're talking about all the great goals scored in this game. Goncalves says, pick that one out and put it on your highlight reel. See if Morgan can get involved. Morgan is tucked down at the far post behind the goalkeeper. He's now walking even closer to the goalkeeper. Maybe he has a few words for Clayson de Lima. He's saying, I'm going to score on you. I'm going to score on you. Now he creeps over to the near post. Now back to the far post. Ball to Leo. Leo scores. Goal! Leonardo de Oliveira makes it 4-3 San Diego. And this third quarter has come alive for all you MASL fans out there. This is what makes the soccer's deadly with Childs. His ability to orchestrate, getting everyone to think it's Morgan. The little point, the little think, the no look. Just as every, he pointed, everyone took a look, and right as he, they did, he passed it to Leo for the goal. Let's listen in as Leo gets his roses. Oliveira. It's a tough one. And I want to mention something that may have not been caught by the cameras there. There's a gentleman down sitting in a very good seat, maybe about four or five rows back. I've seen this gentleman before. Back in the 2018-19 season, he purchased, when they were first doing the throwback kits that you were a part of helping create, Craig. And that gentleman, I wish I had his <laughs> name as the foul is committed down here. It's going to be... What do we have here? He's holding his fist up. It's foul the other oh. way. Okay. I, I was my right. catalyst that really made okay. me think for a second was he holding up a card okay I and i couldn't see it through the you know card like, as well let's take a we'll look see here let's finish this what up we got? it's a dive is what he's Ooh, saying what's... that's an embellishment warning is what it was that's a, wee bit, a wee bit harsh you could just have a no call that's always one of those funny things indoors outdoors uh, does it have to be basketball another basketball analogy does it have to be a flop or a foul yeah. or can it just be Oof. Kind of something in between. You know, Morgan uh, came off gingerly and is being looked at by Paul Savage uh, yeah. after that. He, he went down a little bit awkwardly in the offensive zone off of uh, off of contact. It's for Ontario here off the wall. It's back for a second opportunity for Nestor Hernandez. Stinson gets away with some contact, blasts it off the wall. San Diego try to counter the other way. Attacking from right to left on your screens and these gorgeous 80s throwbacks. You know, the long sleeve gold. One thing that's rarely discussed or under discussed is how important bravery is in the sport of indoor soccer. More on that in a second. Well, we were talking about it back in the second quarter. Talking about Boris Pardo coming out to collect a ball as Frank Tayu's closing in on him at a full sprint. Courage, bravery, always tight spaces, and you got to. Get in there, do the dirty things as Charlie is taken down to the floor. If you saw the way Serra made the challenge at the on the other end of the floor, put his body in harm's way in close quarters where he could have been kicked in the face. Here's Childs. Here's Gardenas. He whiffs at it. Stinson is one foul away from being red carded being out of the match. Out of the game. Five yes. fouls. We we're just listening in on that announcement. Five fouls against Stinson. And I do just want to finish up that quick story about Leonardo de Oliveira. Yeah. You get those mini balls that the, the soccer players, after they score the goal, they get to throw into the crowd. Right. Leo from about 40 yards away picked out the guy I was talking about in the Leo jersey on the money. <laughs> like Tom Brady, Joe Montana got nothing on Leonardo oh, look at this. de Oliveira picked out the number one Leo fan hit him on the dime spot so not only can he do beautiful artistic things with his feet apparently he's got a future as a quarterback as well 
hard challenges here. Cheeky's really working hard, Alan Garcia. <laughs> I love hard, this. Obviously. You know what I love about this right now is I love this from Uzi Tayu as he took a shove from Alan Cheeky's Garcia, who had the nerve to throw a little shove into the chest of Uzi Tayu. I wish we could have a, uh, you know, old HBO boxing tale of the tape uh, for that one of, of Cheeky. So now there's another yeah, little mini scuffle, another little mini argument that's going to be sorted out. We're all going to be calm, and calmness is going to prevail here. And speaking of calmness prevailing, I love Uzi Tayu after he took a shove from the much shorter, much more petite in comparison, Alan Garcia. Uzi Tayu just looked at him and laughed and said, what are you trying to do? And he touched him on the back of the head and said, you don't want to fight me. I just love what we saw there with De Leon and Rojo, you know, exchanging a handshake and a clasp in the shoulder and saying, okay, we're cool, you know, like, cool. cool we're good. We're good. We're hot for a second. Everybody gets angry. And then we take a deep breath and we calm down. Nothing needs to escalate. I'm all about the de-escalation tactics. Here's Tayu almost scoring as he heads it just wide. Whew. That was a big opportunity for Frank. This is... Brother is busy preventing altercations. Frank would like to be busy scoring goals. Maybe he's going to assist one here. Oh, Ontario's best player of the night. Oh, Bossy was driving forward. Ontario getting nothing out of it. Here comes Rojo, Juan Manuel Rojo. Well rubbed out of the play by Berto. Job, Robert Palmer. Palmer back to the aforementioned Obasi. Con Calves. Tried to center into Tayu. Tayu's calling for it. Tayu's saying, launch the long ball. Let's play that old school game. I'm down here in the post. I'm going hard in the paint. Lob it in here. Come on. And meanwhile, Obasi's living in his own world. Slowing things oh, down to his pace. Drawing some boos yeah. from the crowd, saying, play soccer. I love it. Obasi. Like last, hey, and the last time he did this, he scored a golazo seconds later. Great block. This time he just slowed down too much and nothing came of it. Yeah. Launched forward. Horn sounds. James Harden behavior to <laughs> end the quarter. What an action-packed third quarter it was. The Sockers led 2-1 at halftime. They still have a one-goal lead, but it was through a roller coaster ride of 15 minutes there in the third period. It's now 4-3. We got the final 15 minutes coming up right here stay tuned the masl on twitch back with the fourth quarter after this
Well, you know, the playoffs begin next week. That's right. The postseason begins next week. Soccers versus Milwaukee in the first round. And the home leg is on April 10th right here at Pachanga Arena. We'll have two here at home. The series is tied. If the series is tied, a 15-minute knockout game will follow. And you can buy your tickets for the quarterfinals through the Axis ticketing app, or you can call 866-799-GOAL. Again, that's 866-799-G-O-A-L. Let's come together to pull the Soccers through to another championship. Oh, and you can also get tickets by going to sdsoccers.com. My name is Nate Abaurea. A pleasure and privilege to be with you as always. Special hello to everybody tuning in for the first time to some major arena soccer league action on Twitch. Shout out to everybody involved in the chat on Twitch, keeping that thing lively and entertaining as ever. This game has been quite lively and entertaining. Ontario need to win. They must win in regulation to make the postseason. The soccers are just seeing out the regular season. Little fan appreciation night celebration for the soccers as they wear those glorious 80s throwback kits, the long sleeve gold with the soccers diagonal print in blue across the front. You see Tavo and Morgan proud of Spanish town, Jamaica. A little juggle on before the fourth quarter begins. We played 45 minutes here this evening. Will it be the final 15 minutes of Ontario's season? Or is there a miracle from the gang from the Inland Empire that sees them squeak in to the playoffs? We shall see. The Soccers lead by a goal. Can they see this thing out? 45 minutes have been played. 15 to go. Our fabulous TVX crew making this online telecast possible for your viewing pleasure this evening. Melissa May down on the touchline. Again, my name is Nate Abaurea, and for the rest of the play-by-play, -play, I give you, with great pleasure, Mr. Craig Elston. Thank you so much, Nate. I want to say thanks to Brian Ransom, director of the San Diego State Pep Band, for being here, really firing up the atmosphere. It's just so cool. We've had Bobby Cressy here at times. We have, of course, had huge nights with those Brujos when they're here. We just clear the zone and Adrian's going to be banging on that drum behind Clayson De Lima as we get going with quarter number four. Ontario must win. If they win, they're the seventh seed. They're in. If they lose, St. Louis is the seventh seed. They're in. Either way, the Soccers will play Milwaukee Thursday in Milwaukee. Game one. Back here Sunday 5.05. Game two. If it's tied 1-1, the knockout game to follow. The extra time. See, to me, extra time means it's, like, tied or you add time to the clock. But that's a podcast topic. We've got something way more serious. The Furies play offline. Here's Leo looking for the trick. Saved by DeLima. <clears throat> Leo has scored twice tonight on the power play. Absolute rip off of the inside of the right post and home. And then uh, finishing the set piece from Child's assist. Craig Child's two assists in his return to the lineup. Charlie Gonzalez, a goal and an assist. That's the soccer side. Justin Stinson, Anua Obasi, and Thiago Gonzalez have scored for Fury. Two defensemen, defenders, and a midfielder. First minute done in the fourth. Mitchell Cardenas with Charlie Gonzalez, Leo, Child's down low. The shot on by Cardenas, punched out by DeLima, who has played well. Now seven saves tonight, officially. Stinson sending it forward for Uzi. Uzi almost in the Frank roll there, going forward. Stinson, little shoulder dip, and then sent it over to Nestor Hernandez. So the Fury know what's at stake. Furthermore, just in case it's not clear, they have to win this quarter. OT, no bueno. They need all three points. So somehow it goes to overtime. Do they just leave? I mean, well, <laughs> this guy with I was not it's pointless. Don't even play. Were it to be time, they should pull their keeper. Right, right. That's funny. Yeah, I've seen it in hockey, and I've already seen it once this year uh, in this league. So I, I believe we, it was Utica. Crazy, crazy comparison, but it's accurate. We even saw it in the English Premier League last season. The certain Liverpool Football Club. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it was Tacoma, pardon me, that did it. They, and they were right to do it. They were just slow to execute it. Here's Leo coming out on the pressure. Leo, again, impacts all three parts of the floor. Defensive third, 
midfield, offensive third. All of the things he does outside of his goals and assists are what make him underrated in this league. Deeply underrated. Robert Palmer Ooh. looking for Obasi. Zay knocked it down. The ball is loose and is going to be headed back by De Leon. There's 12-13 left in regulation. Now, I've seen it asked in, in the chat. I've heard people say, no, the league is wrong. And I was kind of, you know, saying, hey, if they're wrong, they told me. But I understand now the, the, exactly how in the formula this works out. We've got action, though. But we will explain it. Alvarado is going to run off after having won the ball for the Ontario Fury. The first three minutes have elapsed here in the fourth quarter. The Fury essentially are down two in that way of thinking for their playoff lot. But they're down one on the scoreboard. Here's Tayu. Frank Tayu working on Carter next. A little dance. And not this time. Back to Tepete, back to Tayu. He'll try again. Stop and go. Shoot. Save. Really ripped that one on net. Pardo wings it out. Fired back by Tepete. Danger ball, but game with a little English. Back to Pardo, who can roll it out this time. Still has his touch alive in this possession. Cardenas, bad pass, trying to feed Morgan all the way across the floor, but Obasi was standing in his way. And it is back to the Fury, but four minutes gone now in the fourth. Each minute, a pint of playoff life added to St. Louis, taken away from the Fury. St. Louis needs the result to go the way of the Sockers, or for the match to go to overtime, and then they are in. comes Nestor. Nestor Hernandez, the old ex-Dallas sidekick. Been a Fury for a few years now. Bertovic creeping in. Robert Palmer at the red line. He poked it wide. Leo comes to knock it away from Gonzalez. Played across by Palmer to De Leon. Now Obasi, who's really been taking charge a lot here in the second half. No, he really does have that point guard persona we're talking about. And here he is again. Slow things down. The, yeah. James, the James Harden shout is, is far too accurate here. There's the pick from Gonzalez. He's even cutting on to his left shot there. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's too good. He just needs a beer. Gonzalez and Palmer exchange. We're over five minutes now. Done. 9.40 left to go in the match in regulation. Tai right off the bench and on attack. And well played. Rojo and Cardenas managed to funnel that ball, that flight ball, challenge everything into the hands of Boris Pardo. Pardo lives it long. He's looking for Tavoy. Gets the head on it, but too high. So, okay, very quickly. If Ontario were to win, it would be a three-way tie. And in a three-way tie, this is where the commissioner made a ruling on Friday. In a three-way tie where everyone's played the same number of games, which they all would have completed the schedule, it goes straight to goal differential. And on goal differential, Ontario's ahead of Milwaukee and Milwaukee's ahead of St. Louis. And that's why Ontario would finish seventh. That's what the, would happen if the Fury lead at the end of this regulation. Nine minutes and seven seconds left. Here's Obasi. However, if, of course, the Fury don't get the three points, then it's just Milwaukee and St. Louis tied at 31, at which point you go through the full range, including head-to-head, -head, which is the third tiebreaker, and St. Louis won the head-to-head -head three games to two over Milwaukee. So that's how it works. And that's why Milwaukee's eighth no matter what. Cutler, who has already had a huge play this half, stole the ball away. Zay Roberto on Zay Roberto night to Dallin Cutler. And over to Cesar Serra. The crowd wanted Zay Roberto to put a shot on goal on Zay Roberto night. Instead, he'll send in Serra. Ever the team player. A man who can do it. He steps out to the left foot. He shoots. Punched away by DeLima. Now there's Childs surging in. He's got the ball again. Huh. Warded aside by DeLima. I love that last save from DeLima. Tayu holding off his ex-teammate for a moment. But Serta was able to rescue. And there's Charlie Gonzalez. 
And there's Dallin Cutler, who's really acquitting himself well. Here's Dallin Cutler. It was 2v1 for just an instant. Into Charlie. Off the wall, looking for Childs. Tepete kicks it out. And kicks it out of play. And brings us to the media timeout. What a finish we've got for you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's take a break. Let's take a breath. 7.53 to play, 4-3 Soccers, MASL on Twitch. Four three, soccer's leading the Ontario Fury. Paul Savage, club MVP, athletic trainer, uh, fixing a little leak on the knee of Sean Callahan. He was leaking oil. And they got that thing plugged right up, and he's ready to go. Jimmy Nordberg, head coach of the Ontario Fury, exhorting his troops. Again, the situation. Hate to be repetitive, but I think on a, especially on a fluctuating streaming website where people are jumping in and out, it's important. Ontario uh, getting this to regulation or to overtime does them no good at all. They need three points. You get three points for a regulation win. That means they have 7.53 to get ahead of the San Diego Soccers. And right now, Boris Pardo, who 100% should be the goalkeeper of the year. There's just no question about that. Leads the league in wins by a mile. He plays every game for the best team in the league. At age 37 on 38 during the course of the season. And depending on how all the numbers shake out, and we'll wait for Pete Richmeyer to get out the abacus, very well could win at age 38 the triple crown. Leading the league in goals, pardon me, in goals against average, in wins, and in save percentage. All together. Spectacular. There's some great goalkeepers in this league. There's plenty of guys who deserve to be on the All-MASL teams. And Boris Pardo needs to be first on that list. Period. End of story. If anything, you could make an argument for MVP. As the one combining, defining factor of the through line of, of 22-0-1. You know, missed two games from suspension, one game from uh, uh, COVID. Look at this, Chris Toth into the game Here for Ontario. Here we go, 4-6 attacking. And there we go. I mean, that's that's the point. So Toth comes into Lima, who's been great, comes out, and it's because of Toth's ability with his feet. I love this. Here's Toth. Here's Tepete and Stinson. So it's a 6v5 now. And Toth, of course, has the speed to run back, and he says, give me the ball. He's got a good right foot, you know, too. I, I want to get back to something in a second with this next uh, series of play lines down here. I mean, we've got a serious situation now. Empty net to the western goal to our right. Six men attacking the eastern goal to our left where the Soccers defend. Under seven minutes to play. It's, it's early to be going to a, to a strategy like this. And I mean, it's not just him playing back. I mean, right now you see last man back is Anuo Obasi. Toth is, is playing forward. He's calling for the ball over the top. Soccers need to pressure right here. <laughs> My goodness, uh, you've got to pressure these guys right now. Toth is camped in the corner like he invented. <laughs> now he's got the ball on the right wing. Now Leo's stepping into pressure. Now the ball gets loose for a moment, and Toth wins it back. And Toth's saying, okay, now you go up there. I'm going to not yeah, do that again. Maybe I shouldn't. Right. <laughs> he kind of held out his head. Yeah, okay, I, I remember now. Here's Tayu cutting the ball to Obasi. It went through his legs. He got it back. He sent it to the corner. De Leon off the wall. Cardenas wards it aside. Chipped by Leo. Leo digging it out of the corner, flipping it to himself, heading the ball and getting pulled down by Obasi. Lucky to be away with a common foul. Get another look at it here. Leo yeah, on his, on his way right. to the floor. It's common all right. Foul. Yep. Common foul, absolutely. 
That's why we got replay. And by the way, replay will be in play for the Ron Newman Cup playoffs. One challenge per team per game, extra one in a, extra time if you get there. Meaning overtime, not the third, the third game. The third game is 15 minutes instead of 60, but it's a best of three, and it's such a difference and such a great difference for this league, something they should be really proud of. If instead of playing, you know, single game knockout at the end of an arduous season, that you have that three game series. And if the championship series is five games sometime soon, I'd, I'd absolutely, I'd applaud. I'd 100% applaud. Pardo headed away by Cisse and sent forward by Gonsalves and it nicked the scoreboard, did it? I don't know what happened here. Tadlasek called, that's what Pardo's saying. No, it's going forward, there's some of the call against the Sockers. That thing didn't hit the scoreboard, it's a, some sort of what? violation against San Diego. It's gonna see Ontario get the ball at the red line or top of the arc? I mean, wasn't it on, on it was a defensive three line against San Diego's what they said. There you go. That's what it is. Sorted. And Toth is up and for the... And look at Toth. I, I can't wait to go back to something after this. Palmer. Chested. Oh, look out. Ooh. <laughs> Rescued by Berto. Oh. Shot high by Stinson. Five and a half to play. This is fun. Have a good time. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you're watching. Blocked out of bounds, great block shot. So I, I, I made the call back to uh, Liverpool last season with Allison Becker. I wanted to make a quick clarification about that because you're talking about pulling the goalie, obviously the hockey comparison. Well, that was a crazy play with Liverpool where they actually didn't pull the goalie. It was the goalie himself who went up and scored a goal in a tie game. Here's Chris Toth. It's not a traditional sixth attacker. They just He's still just the goalkeeper. And he's actually up <laughs> playing an attack for his team. It's fantastic stuff. Obasi, left footed, gets passed, puts it to the middle. There was Leo again. And here is Allison Becker on the ball. Yep. And it is Zepete <laughs> again to the middle, and this time it's Stinson and back to Toth. And Toth is running this now to Tyu, spinning to his left. Shooting kick save! <laughs> Awkward one here for Toth. Oh! Almost. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> Wowza. Get in. <laughs> Wowza. Hope you're enjoying this live on Twitch. Get in. Here. Here's Obasi, the final five minutes presented by Calafino Tequila. Enjoy the Fino things in life. Go to calafinotequila.com. Make mine extra and yeho, and I might need a double. Oh, this man. is wild stuff. Headed oh. and grab. Kid Pardo throwing a goal. This one is nope. a nope. nope. It checked up like uh, one of my beautiful pitch shots onto the green. It checked <laughs> up in my dreams <laughs> as the foul is called on Pee Wee. That's an interesting one. Pee Wee with his. Finger in the face of Bert Robert Palmer, saying, you know what you did. Palmer said, get in my car. Yeah. And then he gets the restart. There's four minutes left. Yeah. Uh, interesting. There was no contact from Pee Wee there. I love Here's here, here, here comes Allison Toth again. This is fantastic stuff. Blocked by Pee Wee. Headed by Serta. To Ontario's credit, when they've done this so far, the Sockers haven't been pinning them in possession, you know. They, they've controlled the ball. I mean, Obasi can handle the ball, and so can Toth, and so can Stinson into, you know, they've got a good group out there for this. Under four minutes to play. Toth, challenged oh. by Rojo. Good step up there. Excellent defense. Leo showing some pressure to Tepete, and then keeping Obasi offside, so to speak. Here's Stinson oh, trying to jump on that steal. Leo's trying to get the read on one of these. And there's the steal. And the shot blocked by Gutierrez, uh, courtesy of Obasi. 3.30 to go. 4-3 San Diego. Tayu spins, he's got the chance. Saved away! Pardo does it again. Leo's got the ball. He's got oh. Toth to head oh. it back. Chris Toth. <laughs> Chris Toth. Oh, Here's Tayu. A unique performance I'm, that is on display right now. I'm just a fan of the MASL. No, oh, they took him off for Cisse. They've got a real sixth attacker now and a foul called. They on. already had. They already had the best sixth attacker in the sport. I, I can't believe they're and now Dalip. What now happened? Dalima's back in. What happened? Oh, he's tired. That's um, all. He's just tired. I can't handle this. It's too much. He needs a he needs a blow. This is great. When you when you go this long, you need a break. So DeLima is back in net. Good luck to them uh, doing the numbers. Timeout called by San Diego. 
with 2.59 to play. Let me get us legal real quick. I want to say welcome to our new home on Twitch. Make sure to make an account and follow at MASL underscore soccer and all of its cohorts. Underscore soccer two, underscore soccer three, underscore soccer four. Just in case you need to perhaps use them on a particular night. Like tonight. And make sure to join the watch party in the chat. Do you think you have what it takes to compete at the highest level of indoor soccer? Not are, you. Are you asking me? I've seen your You've team. seen me. I got I've a case. I'm ready for next season. Well, you should apply on MASLsoccer.com for the 2022 MASL Pro Player Combine in Mesquite, Texas. More details at MASLsoccer.com. As long as I don't have to go to Muskegon. No, just Mesquite. I can do Mesquite. I'm not going to Indiana. <laughs> Or Illinois, or <laughs> Illinois. whatever it was. Where was it? <laughs> I'll go, I'll, I will go to Mesquite, though. MASL Primetime is the home for the best highlights, interviews, and action from the MASL each week. Catch the latest episode each Wednesday on MASL TV, which is still on YouTube, with Alex Bastjavansky. MASL has an all-new show hosted by Adam Snavely and Pablo Moore of The Athletic. It's MASL Mondays. Join them every Monday, usually uh, late afternoon, evening, for an irreverent recap of the weekend. That's MASL. I like Monday. my recaps to be irreverent. Chill Brands is the yeah. official CBD brand of the MASL, helping our athletes reach their maximum potential, promoting proper and expedited recovery. Welcome to Club Chill. I'm all about Club Chill as well, Craig. Bang. Green check mark. <laughs> Soccers have won 19 consecutive matches. They're 22 0 1. The one team that beat them was here, Ontario. January 9th, 8-7 in overtime. That game, Ontario took the lead in the fourth quarter. The Soccer's sixth attacked and tied. And then uh, Jorge De Leon came right down the floor, if you remember. The ball bounced off the, the goal wall. Uh, Morgan watched it go right by him, and De Leon scored over the top of Pardo to win that game. Now Toth is back in net. He's had the time out to rest. The Soccer's are not going to go to six attackers, uh, Nate. No. <laughs> I mean, I'd, like, I'd be all this. for it. It makes zero tactical sense, but I would be entertained, and, I mean, that's that's what counts, right? I assume that timeout was either to discuss 6v5 defense and or to just rest some of the guys you see out on the floor, like Serta. You know, Cardenas, of course, is still starts, you know, he'll have the next shift when Serta comes on. It's a goal throw, and it's under three minutes to go. Four to three, our score. Tepete heads it out of bounds, and the Soccers will have a direct kick here attacking the goal from the right wall. And will they attack the goal? Or will they play it around? Playing it around would make a lot of sense. It's De Leon. It's under three minutes. And it's Rojo. Rojo. Morgan. Ball on the soccer's feet for the first time in a long time. Basically since that media timeout. Pardo said, come hither, young child, and then sent the ball away, but now Tepete gets it in the air. Can Tavoy bring it down? Tavoy Morgan, haven't heard from Tavoy all night. Still one goal from 40, one point from 50. Timeout, so, you know, one funny thing, just in terms of Tavoy like that, you know, we talk about his dominance. I think he is one of the most explosively streaky players mm -hmm. I have ever seen. In terms of he, when he lights it up, he becomes unstoppable. And on, and on the flip side. When it's not there, it's, it's just not that. I mean, you know, not that he's not <laughs> trying. You see how hard he's worked. And that never goes away. It's just kind of like the, you know, like you know, back in the day when I used to play cards. And like there's those days that you sit down and... The, the whole cards connect with the board and then there's other times where the, it just never makes sense and the one time it does the other guy always has the better hand you know and that's the way it's kind of been for Devoy but the thing is he has it most of the time <laughs> that's why he's got stacks stacks on stacks of goals 39 because when he's hot he'll score in bunches he'll score yeah. three he'll score five 40 yeah 40 is just something something cool about getting that 40 mark still time still a little bit of time could be an empty netter. Could be all sorts of different ways that Tavoy could still net one tonight. But he may have to settle for 39, and the Soccers can 
finish the regular season with a win. Oh, our uh, intelligence has been besmirched because of our geographical ignorance originally of Muskegon. If you're joining us early, by the way, uh, this was a bit we were doing earlier <laughs> in the broadcast where we were told the placement of it and we did it, you know. A bit spoke my mind. <laughs> See, the bit continues. And so uh, that's the situ that was the situation. It was, we jest, we jest, we understand. I love you, Illinois. Michigan. Indiana, too. Did I mention Iowa? What about Michigan, though? Mad love for the mitten. I got mad love, for, mad love for the mitten. Toth under pressure. Leo right on him. Got it out of there. But Serta, that ricocheted into the Fury bench off of Taiyu for sure. That is soccer's ball. Things are desperate for the Fury. 2.14 to go. Serta. Morgan. Brings it along the wall. He shoots. Kick oh. save. That was goal 40. He was right there. Toth can also save shots. In addition to all the possession and fancy work he's done in this match. And here he comes forward again with a minute 53 left in the Fury season. Unless they can mark twice without San Diego scoring. In this time frame. De Leon and Toth. And Stinson down, and the free kick coming. Big chance here for Ontario. This is it. I mean, they need two. They, they got to they gotta score one now. Now, you need one before you can get two. Broadcast school really paying off there for you, Craig. Thank you. The key is to play indoor soccer. <laughs> and that's what they're going to try and do. And Tiago Gonzalez is now the sixth attacker. And he's lost the ball. Leo stole it. Leo's got it with Christian. He went for goal early. Didn't think he had the angle. Tiago broke the angle to play it to Christian, so he went for the shot. I thought the pass was still on. I think Christian did as well. Minute 20. Here's Obasi again on the roll. And he got past his man and his block, and it's there. And the foul is on Tayu. Handball. Handball. They kind of controlled with the hand. They're unfortunate. It almost wow. was ball to hand type of situation. Yeah. But he benefited from that. Note Handball in these whistle. critical moments, it's Leonardo de Oliveira, who is always out there in important defensive assignments, has to just work the entire field from one side to the other. Pardo fires it out. And Berto got his head on it first, but as such, it's soccer's ball because it's short hopped. Over where it says Ron Newman Field. With the 10 stars for the 10 championships won by the greatest coach in indoor soccer history. He invented the super power play that we saw earlier. Morgan steals from Toth. Morgan kicked away. Morgan knocked down hard. Very hard. Foul on Foul on Tavoy Morgan. Okay. Okay. Well, I wondered if Tavoy Morgan would have a couple of real chances to net his 40th goal of the year. He's had two or three here in the final two minutes. St. Louis Ambush fans on their feet right now. With 54 seconds left, they're going to be the seventh seed. There goes Toth again for Gonzalez, unless something really remarkable happens for the men in black. It's Obasi. He's going to be bossy. He's going to take this. He's been hanging on to the ball. He finally lets it go. Gonzalez challenged by Serra over to Topete. Swing it around. It's De Leon. His shot was blocked by Leonardo de Oliveira, who's everywhere you need him to be. And there's 32 seconds left. And they couldn't possibly, could they? It's a corner here, essentially. Gonzalez will play it back, and it's Obasi, and it's 30 seconds. And it's Gonzalez, and it's Topete, and time is not on their side. It's on St. Louis Ambush's side. They're punching a ticket to host Florida on Friday. It's Topete, and it's 16 seconds, and it's Gonzalez. Gonzalez working it along the red line. Topete booms it, and Pardo puts a signature moment at the end of this match, 11.6 seconds left. Gonzalez. The corner kick from right corner. Timeout oh. called by Ontario. One more timeout so the kids remember where they came from. 4-3, the Soccers lead the Fury. Let's watch Boris Pardo on what's surely Heading to MASL primetime, save of the week, 
territory, save of the month territory for the end of the season. Boris Pardo, leaping save. Alex Bastrovansky putting that in the clip reel right now for MASL primetime. 40 in the timeout. 11 seconds in I'm the feeling game. Feeling that, that bear yawn dude was letting out right there. What a match. Not from, not that, it, that was not a bored yawn. That was, no. a, I'm exhausted yeah. it's from all of this type yawn, of yawn. You know, exactly. That one you have, like the dog has when it's feeling nervous. You I, know? Don't, I don't think that guy had too much anxiety. That guy looked like he didn't have he a care okay. in the world. He was all right. He looked all right. So are the soccers. On track, and still, for them, it's still in doubt because if you play overtime, you play to win. Right. A 20 match win streak to close out the season. Ontario has a different need. Their need is unusual and specific. They need three points. And if they score right now, it's kind of almost a, honestly, a hollow thing. They'd need to shoot on goal from the center field, yeah. from the kickoff. 11.6 seconds left. Here's the corner kick. Both teams had a chance to use the whiteboard for attack and defense. Tayu has... Zay on him. Pardon me, Cardenas on him. Lifted looking, now Obasi. Obasi out, De Leon shot wide. Gonsalves off the wall, and it's out to Obasi. There's three seconds, there's two seconds, and one, and this match is over! The San Diego Soccers got out a 4-3 win under heavy pressure from a team desperate, but ultimately unsuccessful in their quest to extend their season. After being Ron Newman Cup finalist, the Ontario Fury disappear into the night, having lost their final eight matches in a row. And they will not qualify for the playoffs. Congratulations, St. Louis Ambush. You are in the playoffs. You are facing the Florida Tropics. The Soccers, winners of the MASL Shield, will face Milwaukee. The 2018-19 Ron Newman Cup champions. And the first match, of course, will be in Milwaukee in front of that great crowd on the black turf. That'll be officially announced tomorrow. But sources say it'll be Thursday night. That match, perfect timing in terms of giving you then a day to travel, a day to rest, oh. and Sunday night, game two. I just want to shout out Chris Toth right now. Last game of the season for Ontario. Chris, a la, talk about Danny Waltman, so many other keepers in this league. Gave away his gloves to a young fan as he was walking out. Then gave his jersey to an older fan on his way out to the locker room. Beloved in this building. Always a part of the soccer's family, going all the way back to when he was just a baby. His father's old Tanto. It's cool to see Chris play a part in this game. A wild story that kind of developed in this game. And Chris was a big part of it, big part of the entertainment factor for certain. And I just, I, I love spotlighting stuff like that. On his way out, gives the gloves and the jersey away. Incredible stuff. They're setting up the tables because it is fan appreciation night, and that ends with post-match pictures and autographs. And for the San Diego Soccers, 23-0-1. It's not the best record in MASL history. I want to give a shout-out to the Kansas City, Missouri Comets for being 20-0. 23-0-1, second best in the most wins with the highest win percentage. That co rare combination in MASL history. And the man who made sure this 23rd win got across the line more than anyone else, our man of the match, Boris Pardo, is with Melissa May. I'd be first. Can we, can we, can we get him, can we get him escorted out of here? Can you get him out of here, please? Why don't we take it back for a second here as they deal with a situation on the floor. We've got a security thing, uh, somebody uh, heckling directly. And I just think it's, uh, well, I do see a, a, a notch of fans uh, down there that seem to come together. And I see uh, one of our good friends down there as well. 
Okay. Back down to Boris and Melissa. 80% save average, including that last one, that diving catch. You're wrapping up a season where you ended 23-0 and one. Comments on that? I wouldn't have any success this year without my defense, without the guys on the team. So, I mean, all the credit to them. I'm doing my job as a goalkeeper. Got to make the saves to, to help our team stay in it. And and uh, that's the mentality that we've had the entire season. We each do our part. It seems like this game essentially didn't matter. We had locked in the, the number one seed. And we every time we play Ontario, it's always a very physical game. How tonight rank in, amongst those many matchups with them? I mean, Ontario's always going to bring it, especially when their backs are against the wall. Um, they needed to get a point, a result today. I mean, they're always going to be a tough team. I mean, they, we know each other on and off the field. Uh, we play against each other in tournaments in the offseason. We play with them. So they're good friends. But, you know, once we step on the field, all that goes out the window. And we're just trying to, to get the result. Speaking of things going out the window, obviously the postseason, everything restarts and everyone 0-0. Zero, zero. You are going to be playing the Milwaukee Wave. How are you going to get ready for that? Like any other game. We're playing to win. We're playing. Uh, we got to be disciplined in the back. We do our job defensively. We're going to have chances attacking-wise, just uh, holding the team and, and being patient. We know Milwaukee has experienced guys, you know, uh, and, and they've gotten stronger. They've gotten better throughout the season. Um, hats off to them for making the playoffs. They, they deserve it. So, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to a fun, uh, fun couple games with them. It would be nice to go back to the Central Division to, to play on that field again. I was actually looking forward to it. So, yeah, we're ready for that one. Coming back from the pandemic and play, by being able to play at home, wrapping up a regular season, how would you summarize this one? Um, I mean, it was without that little hiccup and overtime loss. It was, it was another stellar season by the boys. You know, we had a good season one time, and, and we, we we slipped up in the playoffs. And we, we, now we have that experience, so we know not to approach the game. Nothing less than, than going in there and giving everything 100%. Congratulations. Back up to you. Melissa May, thank you so much. Great work. Work's not over because the playoffs are certainly on the way next week. Let's get through our superlatives and enjoy them. And we will begin with the fan save, save of the game. Here it is. Got to be the last one. Absolutely. <laughs> How about it? 38, more like 18. Nice way to close out the night. That's a, that's a nice little cherry on top right there for Boris. You just knew when you felt when you saw it too. Well, you it's, just it's felt weird. It. I've seen that same exact thing happen in, in a, a couple times. It's been in five goal games, but then other times it's been in one or two goal games. Boris always gets one of those saves in the final thirty seconds of every home game that he's played. I swear to God, you, you, you could review the tape. There's been one of those at that exact time, almost literally every time we've played here. That's why he's the goalkeeper of the year. It's why he should get MVP votes <laughs> for sure. The, there are a lot of great players on this soccer team. For some reason, that seems to be held against them. When it comes to voting in awards, uh, it's, it's hard to be 23-0-1, but I think when you're 23-0-1, it means you do things better than other teams, and therefore should receive that accolade. But that's just up here from, as my friend Nate likes to say, wrote Zed. <laughs> and uh, that's about what it's worth, indeed. Views from the gantry <laughs> do not necessarily reflect the opinions of anybody else. So the playoffs will be as follows. The Sockers versus Milwaukee, the 1v8. Florida versus St. Louis. Kudos to the ambush. Every single person I spoke to the last week when we went through the scenario said, yeah, but Kansas City's gonna beat St. Louis one of those games. They might win the, you know, St. Louis might win the road game but Kansas City's going to win the home game. But I take you back to what Phil Silvaggio said at halftime. He said, you play to win every game because things can turn. It, can it just takes one loss. Things can turn in the sport of indoor soccer. Your momentum can turn. It's a momentum turn. game. It's a momentum-based game. And St. Louis got the momentum by winning yesterday. Kansas City traveled about half their team to the match took it not seriously because they were locked into the three spot st louis won kansas city came home figured they were going to run the show didn't happen kansas city lost at home to st louis and of course when it fell behind you know nothing to lose for for the comments that you know st louis wins the match so that's 
how it's been going around the league. However, Soccers didn't play along with that script. So it will be Kansas City and Dallas in the 3v6. And then the 4v5, the small field championship of the MASL. <laughs> it's Baltimore and Chihuahua, the Savage, the four seed, the Blast, the five seed. And if all chalk holds in the quarterfinals, the Soccers would play the winner of that series. But because the league does reseed after the first round, if there's any upset, if St. Louis upset Florida, if Dallas upset St. Louis, then the Soccers would face that team. Uh, Dallas upset Kansas City, pardon me. The Soccers would face that team instead of the six or the seven seed. So that's how it works. That's what's coming. It's going to be a spectacular week of action. Go to MASLsoccer.com, bookmark it, check it for when they release all of the dates of all of these games coming up over the course of the next week or so. Nate, I know April 10th, our next broadcast, uh, you're going to be away. You've got a uh, prior commitment. I will be back for, um, can I just say it? Can I just say it right now? Don't I know we try to not jinx anything. In case of. Come on. In case of. Say Come in on. case of. You'll be back in case of. April 17th. Yes, in case of an advance. That would be our second round night, Easter night, uh, Sunday, April 17th. So, but, <laughs> hey, you don't put one thing in front of the other when you've got Ian Bennett and Marcio Leite and company back healthy and looking great yesterday in their home victory over Dallas. Andre Hain back and scoring. All of the guys that were missing when we announced their match here on February 27th, they're all back. They're all back. Other, you know, and, and Joy Capinas is playing great in that. So don't expect anything but this to be a very, very hard match and series against a team that expects to win the Ron Newman Cup Championship. You know, they're just like the Soccers were last year, right? Bad all year, good at the end, get in, get in, you got a chance to win. Yep. Spring an upset, all of a sudden you're the team no one wants to face with Ian Bennett. So, fun times ahead. That's going to wrap up this broadcast. As I see, the RGV Barracudas FC stuck around. Love it including one of our old dear friends, Diego Arriaga, who played goal for them mm -hmm. today uh, and was very, very good. Again, SD Soccer's 2. There he is, number one on the right of your screen. Uh, SD Soccer's 2 going to Muskegon, Michigan. My favorite place in the whole world. Did I ever mention that? For the Final Four. Mention how much I love Muskegon. Also next weekend. I'm a Muskegon man, Craig. <laughs> and a Marlboro man, but that's a different story for a different show. Here we are all done. We're not all done. We have the goal of the game. Holy cannoli. We've got the goal. Front wave. Goal of the game. Here it is. Oh, oh absolutely. Beautiful assist from Dowling Cutler. No look, too. Little Bobby Firmino style. Rojo. Gorgeous. Nice finish, too, from Rojo in the end. Clip this up. And over. Oh, that's the highlight right there. Yeah, and then this, is. that's also mighty pretty as well. It's a beautiful left-footed finish. Love it. For Juan Manuel Rojo. And that is your Front Wave Credit Union goal of the game. Front Wave Credit Union dream big. We got you. All right, that's it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed a great day of MASL action around the country. Want to say a special thanks as the crowd finds its way down to the floor at Pachanga Arena San Diego to our crack crew that worked too, just like me, because I was here with you, our TVX video crew. Most of them were here for both matches. Where's your graphic? Well, that's on you. That's on you, <laughs> Randall Sliz. We'd like to thank Randall Sliz, executive producer Ted Bendrick. <laughs> Mark Hattersley's on the ones and twos. I saw Emily Speranos earlier. Lucia directed. Lucia, hello, Lucia. We got Mike back on the low cam. Graphics, we don't need no stinking graphics. Let's go. <laughs> and we are there. I think we did it. We made it. 4-3. Soccer's beat Ontario. Love y'all. For all you of our friends, we'll be back next week for the resolution of the quarterfinals. Until then, for our TVX video crew, for Melissa May and for Nate Abrea, hope to see you in two weeks. I'll be joined by David Banks, former soccer's great. Wished he could be here uh, today, just like Thursday. He's had a... a situation at home but we believe he will be here and otherwise we will uh, you know we'll let you know we'll see you nonetheless for everyone i'm craig elston 4-3
Soccer's win. Ontario eliminated. St. Louis makes the playoffs. And we'll see you in Milwaukee. Have a great rest of your night. Goodbye.